I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today, we're going to talk about electromagnetic fields. You see here a diagram that shows examples of things that are emitters of radiation, from low frequency up through high frequency. Right in the middle there, of course, is the range that is visible to human eyes. Today, we're going to be focusing on low frequency emissions. We'll be looking at low frequency emissions, including power lines up through microwaves. It is quite well known that large doses of high frequency radiation can be harmful to human health. You see listed here in red, white, and blue some of the better known examples. We can also note that we are nonetheless often slow to act to reduce our exposure, and the government is often slow to recognize and regulate things that are harmful to human health. The effects of very high frequency radiation have been well known for a long time. Tanning beds, which use ultraviolet radiation, have been in common use since 1977. However, it was 2014 when the FDA changed the classification of tanning beds from a low risk to a moderate risk. It is known that low frequency radiation stresses the body's cells, which may lead to other illnesses or conditions. However, currently our government says that there is no clear evidence that low frequency EMF causes harm to human health. EPA.gov also says that evidence is inconclusive. The World Health Organization says that low frequency EMF is possibly carcinogenic to humans. Next, I'm going to show you how to use some different EMF detectors in order to detect radiation in this low frequency range. It's impossible to avoid all exposure to the electromagnetic fields. However, it is possible to take steps towards minimizing your exposure. For that purpose, we're going to focus on the three factors you see at the top, intensity, time, and distance. We will be comparing these four devices that are sold for the purpose of detection of low frequency EMF. This Tri-Field 100XE is sensitive for the magnetic fields. In fact, it has two ranges, 0 to 3 and 0 to 100, depending on how precise you want to be. So it can be very sensitive. One thing to be aware of is that it is frequency rated, so it will generally read higher for the magnetic field setting. In our test, we found that it was not as sensitive with electric fields or the microwave frequency. So this device is not going to miss any of your low frequency magnetic fields, even if it is not as good with the electric or the microwave. Be aware that you can often use a cell phone app to help detect things like microwave fields. Another particularly good aspect of this meter is that it is non-directional. In other words, it does not have to be pointing directly at the source in order to detect a magnetic field. When using this device, you will not miss the fact that there is magnetic exposure. However, you may not know exactly what is the direction of the source of the radiation. If you are running tests with more than one device at a time, you should also be aware that this unit will detect emissions from other devices, so you will need to compensate for that. For example, we had three other EMF detectors operating, and we were able to see that there was some interference from these. This is a set of specifications that can be found in the user manual for this meter. Next, we're going to talk about devices that were shown as C and D on our array of four different devices. We will return to the B model last. This one, device C, looks quite different from any of the other three. You can find a teardown video for most devices, but I have not seen a teardown video for this kind before. I've taken it apart here so that you can see what is on the inside. I have a separate video with a more complete teardown, but here at least you can see the inside and the antenna. So the antenna here is at 90 degrees to the axis. In order to get a more accurate reading with this device, I disabled the others so that there would not be interference from them. You can see here the reading that we obtained close to a 230,000 volt power substation. And these are the specifications in the user guide for this meter. This is our device D. This one only measures in units of Tesla, unlike the others which measure in both Tesla and Gauss. This is the equation for converting from one kind of unit to the other.
This is our device B that we're now returning to. We saved this for last because it was a curious case. While it is a highly rated meter, it seemed in our trials that it was the least sensitive. Sometimes when the other meters picked up a strong magnetic field quickly, this one did not. Sometimes it gave a reading, but was slower to produce the reading. We're not sure of the reason for this. It's possible that it simply works more slowly. It's possible that it needed to be angled differently than the other meters. In other words, it's different in its directionality. It's possible that the unit was simply malfunctioning. So in the end, we can't be completely sure whether it's actually the case that the other meters were all overstating the amount of radiation, and this one was the accurate one, or whether the others were all more correct, and this one was the faulty one. We do know that device A tells us that in some situations it reads high, but the manuals for the other two don't make that statement. Here are the specifications in the user guide for the device B. First, we measured outside power lines. We took readings at three different locations, one next to a power substation, Then, underneath some overhead wires coming from that substation, but some distance away... You, you keep moving, and I have to get close to be able to see numbers. And then, by some underground cables. Note that there isn't any signage around here to warn you that there is radiation in the area. In addition to the four devices, we are going to look at three cell phone apps. There are two different types of apps to measure electric fields and to measure magnetic fields. There are two different operating systems, Android and Apple. Apple phones can only do magnetic because Apple does not let developers have access to the sensor for electric fields. Here is a demonstration of detection of magnetic fields by three apps using a household magnet. See the two on the left. One is iOS, one is Android, and they both are registering the magnetic field. This one on the right doesn't change because it is limited to higher frequency of electrical magnetic waves. Here, when I move a Wi-Fi router across the phones, the two on the left don't really change, but the one on the right has a strong response. Now, we'll try the three apps on the microwave oven. Again, the two on the left are not responding. The one on the right does change, but only a small amount. The app on the right is ElectroSmart, and this is their description of what it will and will not detect. Note that it says it does not detect microwave ovens because it is restricted to a very narrow band of signals. However, since we know the microwave oven does emit EMFs, we can test to see whether or not the door is acting as an effective shield from that electromagnetic field without purchasing a device specifically for that. We put our phone with the app inside the oven, and through the mesh, you can still see that there is no signal at all. Then I put the router and antenna very close to the oven. It is hard to see, but it is weakly green, meaning that there is a small amount of radiation that does pass through the door. After a short while, it moves up into the yellow to orange range. Then, when I open the door so that there is no barrier, it does change quickly to red. Most people are not aware that the microwave oven also produces the lower frequency non-microwave radiation. Depending on the device, it may or may not be particularly sensitive for the EMF detection in the range you are trying to measure. This particular device, held close to the router, shows a low reading for magnetic, but warning level for electric fields. And the apps designed to detect microwave frequencies will not detect those lower frequencies. In order to detect that, you need to use one of the devices for detecting EMFs. The app is very good for detecting the very narrow band on which Wi-Fi and cell phones operate, 
but may not be as sensitive for anything outside of that, even if the band is close. Your hand is in the way. We're going to look at several different microwave ovens. This commonly used home appliance is a significant source of both microwave and non-microwave radiation. In the next video, I will show details from many more homes and communities that I will use to demonstrate that there are EMFs, and I will focus on the three factors, intensity, time, and distance, so that you can learn how to minimize your exposure. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.